have you checked out all the new handicappers at Wager Talk? If not, here's your chance. You can take 50% off your first daily or three day all access purchase at Wager Talk using coupon code TRYWT. Our new roster of experts is 30 deep, covering sports from all around the world, giving you tons of options to choose from. All you have to do to redeem this offer is go to wagertalk.com, choose the handicapper of your choice, and use coupon code TRYWT at checkout, saving 50% on your first purchase. Happy Friday, guys. Welcome to Wager Talk TV and Puck Time. I am Carmine Bianco. Andrew is still in Montreal. Uh, I think he's going to see the game uh, tomorrow night, I believe it is, um, with uh, some of his buddies. But uh, I talked to him. He seems to be doing well. And uh, we're going get, to get on without him. We got Andy Lang in the house today. Brian Leonard also in the house. So we've got more than enough opinions on today's four games. We're going to cover the aforementioned Montreal Canadiens as they uh, make a trip to Philadelphia. We've got Minnesota and Toronto, uh, Los Angeles and the New York Islanders and Colorado and uh, Winnipeg. We'll finish it off with those ones. I got to say, uh, anytime I put out these uh, pizza parlays, guys, uh, I've got to stop going against Detroit. Uh, why do the parlays always die at Little Caesars Arena? I am not sure. You would think an arena named after a pizza company would be nice to us and uh, and give us a winner. Maybe I'm going to get Little Caesars. I'll contact them, see if I can get them to sponsor the pizza parlay and give away uh, a few pizzas to uh, some of our live chat uh, 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 people out there. Anyways, let's bring in the boys. Andy, what is going on? Uh, you know, having a really nice run in hockey. Uh, last night was great. Four and one for clients, eight and three. We keep talking about this is the time of year where our volume ramps up and uh, we've started to bring in the profits. So uh, it's an exciting uh, time of year for us prop betters in the NHL markets. Uh, all of the sports are doing well. So uh, myself and clients, nothing to complain about. Uh, and uh, can't wait to talk some hockey with you guys today. Uh, and uh, talking hockey, we will. The props yesterday, I had a couple of them. I had the Ovechkin one. I figured uh, um, he would get over that number, and he did. Barely did, but it, he did. And then I also had one on uh, on Sidney Crosby, over two and a half shots on goal, and he's got two. And uh, it's like at the end of the game, he comes around the around the net, and he could have literally stuffed it in, but he passes it across. To, I think it was Latang who scores, and I'm like, man, you couldn't have just been selfish once. In your life and just try to score yourself but uh, so that was a loser but um if they come and go um a crazy game last night that boston that boston uh, seattle game i don't know I, I had them in regulation and i know that brian had them as well too brian you had them as well too and uh it was a show best bet uh they got there but that was pond hockey at its at, at its greatest you may not have seen the game because you were watching Another amazing game in itself as the uh, Calgary Flames, um, they need the Heimlich remover, uh, Heim Heimlich maneuver in the third period. They fell apart uh, to your Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, they certainly did. They had one shot on goal in the third period. And if I hadn't gone to a game with a guy who'd never been to a game before, I would have left after two periods because Vegas looked terrible. Uh, they didn't look nearly as terrible as my 5% play on the Rangers yesterday, uh, losing 4-1. to one. The Rangers just couldn't get the puck in the goal. I mean, from a, from a expected goal standpoint, they were the better team, but they didn't get it done, and we don't get paid. Luckily, we got that uh, play on Boston for our show best bet, but it's frustrating. I lost two in a row on the uh, NHL 5% and... Um, going to step back a little bit and I'll probably end up passing today, but apologize to that for everybody. Cause that was, it's frustrating when you lose a game like that. Uh, I listen, I had that one as well too, Brian. It, it was, it was frustrating. I thought it was a good spot. It didn't turn out to be a, a good spot uh, with the wings returning home off that five game trip and the Rangers just didn't show up. And I didn't feel good about the fact that, that um, I thought it was going to be a uh, Shesterkin in goal. Um, uh, uh, and instead, they went with Halak, and you know I don't think he he didn't play terrible, but he didn't uh, he didn't play uh, way Shesterkin would play and, and and sort of keep you in the game until the team got their legs, and and it just never happened. Uh, 
Uh, oddly enough, or that streak of Detroit first periods uh, where they don't trail at the end of one just continues on. I think it's at 14 or 15 now. Mm -hmm. 15 straight games where Detroit has not trailed at the end of the first period. Uh, that's a moneymaker in, in itself. And Johnny Detroit's got to be happy because currently sitting in eighth place with 64 points in a playoff spot, the Steve Eiserman built Detroit Red Wings. The Florida Panthers are tied at 64 right behind them. Uh, and then you've got Pittsburgh and the Sabres at 63, 62, and Washington at 62. It's going to be an amazing race. But if Washington and Pittsburgh continue to play like they both played last night, um, they're going to be on the outside looking in, boys. Uh, any, uh, any thoughts on uh, on this playoff race before we hit the first game? Yeah, you were lucky enough to uh, get ahead of the curve there. Great, great bets on those two teams. And as I'm watching the scores from uh, from Allegiant Stadium, or excuse me, from uh, T-Mobile, uh, I'm looking at it. I go, why? I talked about it on the show. I go, I want no part of Pittsburgh. I want no part of it. And they didn't end up on it. And it's frustrating when a game that you kind of pegged and you weren't on it, it's just something that happens. And it's frustrating as hell. Yeah, it it uh, it was. You watch that game, and then you uh, you know when I read some of the the comments the next day from 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 the coaching staff. Uh, obviously, the the Washington game, they just their offense. If you watch that game, they they just did not look in sync. Uh, and it's not just because Ovechkin is back for the first game, and they got to get it back together again. He was only gone for uh, three or four games. But you look at Pittsburgh, and, and their coach just said. The team we have right now is the team we have right now, uh, and we've got to work with what we have. That's not a sign of confidence coming from the head coach of, a, of, of that team, and there's a lot of aging players on that team, so it could very well be you know, the last kick at the can for, uh, for a lot of these. And we saw Washington sell off or, or trade away Orlov, who was a very good defenseman. So what sign are they giving their players when they uh, – uh, a good rugged defenseman like Orlov is sent packing uh, uh, and traded to the Boston Bruins, making the Bruins just that much more better heading into the season. But with that said, guys, we got four games. Let's get right to it. Uh, this is not the featured game of the night, so we're, that's why we're doing it first. It is the Montreal Canadiens and the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, we'll have a look at the numbers on this one. The Flyers, as we get it up on the board. Flyers minus 150, Montreal plus 130. The total stands here at six, uh, minus 125. I think it opened at six and a half, and it's sitting at uh, uh, six. And Dan, I go to you here uh, first on this one. Um, I'm torn on which way to go here because the Flyers are coming back off a road trip, and I normally like to, to, to fade a team in, in that position. But the Montreal Canadiens, despite winning their last game five to two, have so many players out of the lineup. I just don't know whether they can they can spring an upset two games in a row, even though they're a small price favorite. Uh, Allen is slated to go for Montreal. We don't know who's in net for Philadelphia. I'm really hoping it's it's Carter Hart tonight, um, because if it is, I may just uh, 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 take a small small lean to the Montreal Canadiens because I want to uh, uh, I want Urson in goal tomorrow night when uh, the Flyers play a back to back against the New Jersey Devils. So uh, I'm leaving it up to the goaltending. If Hart is confirmed, I am going to take just a small lean on the Montreal Canadiens at plus 130 in this spot. But give me your thoughts on this one. Well, first off, I'm not laying minus 150 on Philadelphia in just about any situation. And Montreal is one of the most confusing teams. It's like, you know, if they're playing a really, really terrible bottom feeder or they're playing an elite team, yeah, bet on them. <laughs> Anybody else is uh, they're going to lose. So I, I was, I'm staying away from the money line in this game. And actually, I think this game is pretty tough from a props betting standpoint because we don't have a lot of players that are consistently going over. But at the same time, we don't have a lot of players that are consistently going under. There's a couple of notes in here. I can't say these are really strong plays, but uh, Mike Matheson, you could look at his under two and a half shots on goal. This guy has three shots on goal total in the last five games. His shots have just fallen off a cliff. The under is 15 and five the last 20 games he's played in. So if you're looking uh, at an under, which I know most people play shots on goals, uh, you're looking at overs. But I mean, Matheson is definitely trending more towards the under. 
And then I like the price on uh, Nick Suzuki over two and a half shots on goal. He's all the way up to plus 130. And I know he's gone under in two out of his last three games. But before that, he had gone over in five out of six. In the games that he went under two and a half shots on goal, he had two exactly, and he had some shots that missed. Um, so I, Philly gives up over 31 shots a game. I think it's a good spot for Suzuki. He's been dancing around this two and a half number and at plus 130. Uh, sure, I'll bite. This potentially could be a nice. Uh, it could be a, a. It could be a surprisingly high scoring game if the defenses are not playing well. You could see a lot of shots. So uh, I, I might take a sprinkle on Suzuki just because we're getting that plus 130. All right, Andy, and, and it, it's it's a good point. And then you, when you look at like some of the names that are out for the Montreal Canadiens and some of the forwards that that are out, you know, guys like Caulfield, um, you have to you, you have to figure that uh, Suzuki's going to get a, a little more ice time. He's probably the the focal guy on the team, and will be taking more shots. So that's uh, um, that's the narrative I look at when when I'm looking at uh, at these type of prop plays as well, too. Right, um, give me your thoughts on this one. Canadians, can they spring the upset? We have some guys saying the heart is confirmed. I haven't uh, checked uh, the confirmations yet, but um, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I've been on Montreal and Philadelphia pretty good amount of times this year, but I usually like to use them when they're playing a team that can overlook them. And uh, we've seemed to have some pretty good uh, success with that, especially out of the Montreal, as you mentioned. Uh, they seem to play very well against really good teams. Uh, so we've made some nice underdog uh, profit on, on them this year. But now we've got two teams, both hungry for a win. Uh, you could even say the Philadelphia is desperate for a win. Uh, they just played four games on the road, lost three of the four. Now they're back home. Uh, I don't like to play teams first game home, which is one of the reasons why I faded Detroit yesterday. Uh, and that's the situation Philadelphia is in here. But it's a losing uh, road trip as opposed to a winning road trip. I, I saw... Uh, text on Twitter uh, or something on Twitter today that Ralph Michaels is doing a show today and he's going to be breaking down um, teams coming back from a four or more game road trip. Uh, I'll have to tune into that to see if he has uncovered something uh, if you have a winning trip as a pair compared to the losing trip because he's got all that database. But uh, yeah, the line's too high for me here. 150 for Philadelphia is too much to lay. I know Montreal's a little bit shorthanded here, but if I had to play it, I'd play Montreal, but this is not the type of game I'm really looking to play either one of these teams, so I'll be passing. All right. I couldn't even get a play out of you, Brian, but I get it. Uh, if you're not going to bet it, uh, you're not going to give out a play and have people playing something that uh, you don't like just for the sake of uh, putting out a play, so I'm perfectly fine with that. You talked about high prices. Speaking of high prices, this next game has – Somewhat of a high price. It is the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Minnesota Wild. The Leafs minus two, 175 in this spot on a four game win streak. And the totals at six, um, shaded to the over uh, at minus 125, more than shaded to the over. Uh, Brian, I'm going to go to you first on this one. Uh, Gustafsson is confirmed for Minnesota. Flurry was in goal last night in that two. Uh, two nothing win over uh, or in Columbus, and it looks like it's likely going to be Samsonov in goal for the Leafs tonight, although not yet confirmed. Seven back to backs for Minnesota this year, Bry. Uh, they've gone four and three. They won their first four back to backs, and at the beginning of the season, I mentioned the back to backs aren't really relevant at the beginning of the season. You want to look at the mid to late part of the year. Uh, when these teams have played 50 plus games and uh, they've lost their last three back to backs, Minnesota. Um, I think four or five of those have gone over the total. Give me your thoughts on this one. Is this a play against on the wild? Yeah, Minnesota, very streaky as of late. Um, they've won four straight, which is the good news. The bad news is they've only scored 10 goals in those four games. Uh, they did play some defensive teams, um, Nashville. Uh, Dallas, not the Kings are not as much of a defensive team. And then last night they shut out Columbus, but uh, the expected goals show that Columbus was the better team on that and deserved a little bit better. Um, to me, it's a correlated parlay if you're looking at anything like that. If you like Minnesota, I would think you'd like playing the under. Uh, they've given up zero, one, three, one, uh, three. 
two, uh, two. I mean, it, it's a team right now that's playing very good defense. It's not getting the offense from it. One thing that concerns me here is we missed the early part of the month because of the all-star break. And this is still um, a, a situation for Minnesota where they've had a lot of games in the short amount of time since the sixth, this will be their 11th game in the last what, 18 days. Uh, this is a team loaded schedule. They played yesterday. Uh, they played Toronto today, get a day off. And then they got another game against Columbus the next day. So, Minnesota right now is a tired team, and if you're looking at that, they played 11 games since the uh, All-Star break, and I believe Toronto has only played seven. So they're much healthier, and as you pointed out, when you're looking at the second uh, of two of a two-game schedule, as the season goes on, it means more. Uh, you got a Toronto team coming back home after playing two on the road. Um, the last game was short trip, Buffalo game before that, short trip to Chicago. So... They're much, much better rested. Uh, they've had two days off before this game, get a day off, and then they go to Seattle uh, on the 26th. So I, I prefer the Toronto side here. Uh, don't want to lay that number. Got to find a way to do it. Maybe it, with a total of six, you, you think you might be able to play Toronto team total over, but that Minnesota defense has been so good. But you got to figure in the second of a back-to-back, -back, 11th game in 18 days, eventually it's going to catch up to Minnesota. I prefer Toronto. Try to find a way to play it. Not going to lay the 210. But um, looking that way in this one is because you just can't ignore that schedule. 11 games against seven games in this short amount of time since the All-Star break. Yeah, and, you know, obviously at that, that 210, uh, it, it's similar to my thought process on uh, the Boston Bruins last night. I didn't want to lay the big vig. Uh, I thought they could get it done in regulation time and reduce that to about a minus 120, 125, 130, something like that. I think it was, uh, if not lower, and uh, they got their win in, in, in regulation. So it worked out for me. Maybe the leaps in regulation, I think they're uh, anywhere from minus 110 to minus 125, somewhere in that price range, if you think it. And I like your thinking before I go to Andy on um, you know, if you like Minnesota, you like the under. Uh, it, it's something I mentioned when Minnesota played uh, a couple games back against the LA Kings at home. I said, if you like Minnesota, you've got to take the under. It's kind of correlated. If you like LA, it's going to be a higher scoring game. And Mini, Mini won that game two to one. My thoughts are similar to this one. It's it's just that the Leafs are a type of team that they, I think the O'Reilly trade uh, uh, really helped them. It sparked that second line. And we'll see if it has a trickle-down effect on that lineup as a whole. But this is a team that plays well against good teams and uh, plays down to the bad ones, uh, losing 5-3 in Chicago, losing uh, to the Columbus Blue Jackets at home 4-3. Those are their uh, their two losses in their last six games. So um, Mini doesn't fall into that category. They fall into one of the better teams, I would have to believe. Uh, Andy, with that in mind, there might be some goals in this game. Would you look at uh, goal scoring props or player props here? I'm looking at player props here. A um, couple shots on goal. And this is, uh, I'm going to use Matthew Boldy as an example, but this is something to keep your eye on uh, when you're looking at player props. And actually the chat is doing a, a great job going over this right now. It's when the books move uh, a player shots on goal up one. So uh, Matthew Boldy for a long time was two and a half shots on goal. And he just, continue to go over and over and over and they've moved him up to three and a half. Whenever I see the books make an aggressive move like that, I immediately get off of that play and possibly look to go the other way. And you look, look what happened uh, with Matthew Boldy here. I mean, he starts off the month with five, three, four, three, 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 five, four, and uh, constantly going over his shots on goal, the books make the aggressive move. And I think what happens is, is A, the player is uh, due for a little bit of regression, and B, the books make an over-adjustment thinking the, the public is going to keep riding the over. Well, what's happened with Boldy the last couple games? Well, he's had two shots on goal and one shot on goal. And I agree completely with Brian about fatigue possibly setting in here in some of these lower-scoring games. I'm going to take his under tonight. Uh, Toronto's the fifth best team preventing shots on goal to left wings. 
So it's a it's a tough matchup for his position. He's uh, coming off of a huge streak on overs. The books make the adjustment to me. That's a sign to start playing unders on a guy like Matthew Boldy, especially when uh, they're going to keep his total at three and a half. I mean, it's hard to get four shots on goal consistently. You have to be a really, really, you know, big time name and, and uh, you know, really talented offensive player. I'm not saying he's not. It's just really, really hard to do night in and night out. So as uh, soon as these books make this move, don't be don't be scared to take the under. So Boldy under is going to be my best bet for this game tonight. All right. I, li- I like it. I like the, the thought process, Andy. I talked actually on uh, – I was on last call uh, yesterday with uh, Megan Payton, and, and uh, one of the questions were, would you look at unders with shot props? And I, I said – in you know, in circumstances where players are playing against good defensive teams with uh, allowed low shots on goal, I go. Andy's very good at that, at finding spots and and making profitable plays. And I like your idea of jumping off of uh, a play when the book adjusts. Uh, you know, I've done that with you know, like the the San Jose. They had a long run of overs, and I was on there with clients putting those ones out there. And then I jumped off, I think, at the right time. And same thing with Vancouver and their overs. And then some of these shot props earlier on, I call it like almost like the Warren Buffett uh, sports betting thing where you make your money uh, for yourself and your clients and then you jump off of it and let someone else try and make money off of it. Uh, that's the way he does his investments. That's the way we're going to do our sports picks, Andy. Um, let's move on. LA Kings, New York Islanders. Um, let's have a look at the prices on this one. And Andrew's in our chat, so it's good to see he's awake. And uh, he didn't uh, tie one over last night in Montreal. The Islanders minus 125. The LA Kings plus 105. The total here is at six. Shade a little bit to the under. There are some five and a halves across the board as well, too. Um, with Copley starting last night, it's going to be Jonathan Quick in goal unless they decide to go Copley back to back. Sorokin is confirmed for for the uh, New York Islanders. This is another one of those ones I feel that um, falls into that same category of uh, if you if you like the Kings, you're probably going to like the over in this game. If you like the Islanders, you might want to lean to the under. But the Islanders haven't necessarily been an under team. That trade with the Vancouver Canucks has given them a bit of an offensive burst as well, too. I think you might want to look at the total here. If you can find those five and a halves in there, they are still out there. I would jump on uh, uh, probably on the over here in this one. Andy, I'll go right back to you for your thoughts on this game. Well, uh, it drove Carm nuts when I did this uh, last week, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring back uh, Carmine's favorite segment uh, that I do. So get ready, everybody! It is time for Andy's don't play this same game parlay. <laughs> This is where I give out a same game parlay, and I advise everyone to not play it. Uh, so, <laughs> this, 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 listen, it's a perfect segment because if it hits, I can always say, see, like, uh, awesome, it hit. But if it loses, I can always say, told you not to play it. <laughs> so uh, last week's don't play this actually did hit. So here I'm looking at the Kings. They got a, It's a tough scheduling spot. Uh, overtime loss last night where they had the lead back to back. Um, last Thursday and Friday, Tuesday game last night. I, I'm, I'm betting that this is a little bit of a fatigue spot. So for my same game parlay, I'm going to take the Islanders money line. I'm going to take total goals in the first period under two and a half. And I'm going to take the Kings under four and a half team total. So that's on your domestic books. Uh, click on same game parlay and use these alt lines. So Kings games are one and six to the under in this first period. The over was against Anaheim, one of the worst defensive teams. I don't know, not just this year, but maybe in history. They're so bad. Uh, Islanders games are on a one and five run under this total. And uh, the Kings scored three and one goals the last two games. I think they're tired. I don't think they get over their total. I like the Islanders to win. I think this might be, I don't want to say a throwaway game for the Kings, but I think this is one that it's going to be uh, a tough ask for them to win. So Islanders money line. Total goals in the first period under, and then the Kings team total for the game under four and a half. All right. I like it, and I like the don't play this same game with Parley. We had this on, Brian. Uh, uh, you probably didn't see the show. We had this on uh, the last time Andy was was on, and then it, it brought me back to um, what had happened earlier that week with uh, doing this, the stoppage time soccer show that at uh, – that I, that I host, and I had Pavlos on, and uh, I usually do a promo at the beginning of the show and, and promo the guys and stuff. So 
you're trying to help the guys out, uh, promo them. And then Pablos comes on and he's like, I'm like, Pablos, how was your weekend? Oh, it was terrible. I didn't, I got all my plays wrong. My dog left. My girlfriend <laughs> ran off with my brother. Like he's literally <laughs> sounded like a country song. It's yeah. just, it was the worst ever. I'm like, all right, get Pablos's picks. So let's get him back on uh, board. But, you know, I uh, love the guy because at least he showed transparency, which is the important yeah, thing. Exactly. Much like you said about like your, you know, you're talking about your 5% play at the beginning of the show. Um, turtles are those chocolates you give away at Christmas time. Uh, when you, when we win, we talk about it. And when we lose, we should also talk about it. That's the best way to do things. Be hundred percent transparent. With that said, Show some transparency in this Islanders and uh, Kings game and tell us who you like, Bri. Well, since we are being, being transparent, I want to try to clear something up with Andy. Uh, the total in this game is six lean to the under. He talked about a two and a half in the first period. I'm assuming that's an alternate total. total. Yeah, so you could do you could you click on same game parlay on yeah. like FanDuel or DraftKings or any of those, and then you can put all of the alt lines together. So like all of those plays were alt lines, but it comes out to be plus one thirty. So gotcha. that's how same game parlay works. I just wanted to clear it up for the people watching because uh, yep. I, I I didn't wasn't expecting a two and a half. I go oh two and a half in the first period. That's kind of strange. All right, that's that's good. Uh, I'm going to use this as my best bet, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it right now. But I do want to point out, and you touched on this, Andy, uh, the Kings had that game wrapped up, at least in my mind, they had that game wrapped up yesterday. And to lose it the way they did, it's very similar to the game that I was just at with the Calgary Calgary Flames. You would think coming off of an embarrassing situation like that, the next day they would come out and play better. Uh, so I think even though – they may be a little bit tired. I think they're going to, by the way they lost that, they may play a little bit better. But I'm going to get back to this game for my best bet, and that way keep the keep the show nice and short. It, it's all good. It's Friday. We can bleed into wager talk today later on. Uh, Prez doesn't care. Uh, by the way, Prez has a 5% play up, so I will mention it. Um, I don't know what it is, but you can head over to wager talk, and you can pick that up. Um, but with that said, let's get to the fourth game because then we have the six and sixty segment, uh, and uh, let's try and uh, um, five and one last week with the six and sixty. So we'll see if we can go six and zero oh for the first time this year. But let's look at the last game: Colorado and Winnipeg. This one is a coin flip uh, as far as the odds makers are concerned. Minus one ten both ways on this one. The total is at minus one twenty uh, on the over. Uh, five and a half. Bri, I'll go to you uh, on this one here. It's looking like it's uh, Georgiev and Hellebuck. Uh, first uh, first game home for Winnipeg off a four-game road trip. And Colorado's had four days off. Uh, four-game winning streak, or 4-0-1 their last five, beating uh, Florida, Mini, St. Louis, and Edmonton while uh, losing in OT to uh, Tampa. Four days off. Makar still out. He's going to miss the games through the weekend uh, on concussion protocol. Uh, does that affect uh, where you might go in this game? Yeah, that's that's terrible for he, he and the uh, Colorado fans. Finally get him back, and now he's out again. Um, Colorado sets up as a revenge situation for me here, and it's certain parameters. But uh, they've been they're three and two on the season so far in these revenge situations. Um, but the, I'm kind of worried about the four days off. Normally, I like the team rested, but four days right now, that's, that's a lot. So it's a, a situation of is it rest or rust here against a Winnipeg team that has actually had their number lately. Winnipeg is, uh, I believe, they've got the best home record in the Western Conference, uh, and they played well against um, Colorado lately. So Winnipeg may be the way to look at this, but – I, I like a team coming off of a nice break, two, maybe even three days, but four days may be a little bit too much. And then they got to play Calgary at home the following day. So, and then they got the Golden Knights, who, who are, seems to be playing decent at this point. So, I got a tough schedule coming up in, in three out of the last four days, or three out of the next uh, four days, they'll be playing against good teams. Uh, Winnipeg's a team that has been uh, up and down this year, they've got really hot early in the season. Uh, Andrew and I talked about uh, being able to get them at 50 to one earlier this year. Uh, kind of like the Winnipeg side here. 
uh, but I don't like to go against my revenge situation. So you're getting Winnipeg at a, a pick'em situation on the strongest home court in the Western Conference, kind of like them, but I'm not going to fade um, Colorado at this point, even though, like I said, this four days off could be a negative in this regard. Okay, uh, Brian, I'm going to go back to you just for a quick second on this one. Uh, just a question of you know, four days off. They come off uh, off a game in which it was uh, it was almost pond hockey, a six five. Um, even if they are a little rusty, we always know that this team is good for some goals. That total is at five and a half, and it's it's I think it has more to do with the way Winnipeg plays than Colorado. Um, mm -hmm. Is that a total? I know you're not a totals guy. Would you would you lean an over in this game? I, I guess I would um, to get a five and a half. it was actually opened at six minus one or minus 25. And now for the most part, it's five and a half. So it's been balanced in between. You can still get six minus 25 at DraftKings. But yeah, um, it's unless you've got a team like a Dallas or a Minnesota, uh, certain teams are clear under teams. Uh, I don't consider either Colorado or Winnipeg to be that way, especially Colorado. They've got so much firepower on that team. Uh, yeah, it's possibly uh, possibly play Winnipeg, uh, you know, a team total over. I'll have to take more of a look at it. But, yeah, the over would be the way I would look as opposed to the under. Yeah, you know, like even like uh, we mentioned, like with with Makar out, and it's a big miss. I, I really feel bad for him because this is his second time out, yeah. and you hope this isn't one of those ones that is going to follow him in, in his career. Maybe uh, giving him more time off. We we see it in other sports, and as we know with uh, with Tua and, and Miami, um, right. bringing a guy back too quick. NHL is a physical game. Uh, you're gonna get hit, especially. A defenseman when that puck goes into the corner so um, maybe more time off uh, the better the, the fact that they can't afford uh, to have too many guys out of the uh, lineup and maybe they make a deal for a uh, another puck moving defenseman I hear Eric Carlson is still available for the San Jose Sharks so uh, that would be a good fill-in for Colorado in that McCarr spot um, I'll, I'll go to you Andy on this one uh, if we're looking at goals, we're looking at player props. Uh, if we're looking at an under, uh, we're looking at some under in the player props. Uh, man, it's going to be tough to take some unders in this one. Um, I don't know. Jets aren't doing a whole lot to impress me recently. You know, six and eight in their last 14. And their player props have been tough. I know you, you've you been on uh, uh, Dubois and there's just uh, some of these other guys, uh, Morrissey, they're just not consistent enough. Um, and they've scored two or fewer in three out of their four games on the road trip. Um, Avalanche are, are playing really well. I mean, if you think about it, uh, their, their one shootout loss against Tampa from having five really good wins in a row. I mean, that shootout could, could have gone either way. Uh, they, they beat Tampa. Now they have some unbelievable wins in that five game stretch. And, I mean, my gosh, look at Nathan McKinnon starting to come alive. I mean, we all know he's capable of putting up, you know, big stats. But, I mean, check this out. The last five games, he has 34 shots on goal, five goals, and seven assists. So he seems to be kind of in one of those zones that he can get in and just rip off a ton of a uh, ton of shots and a ton of goals and a ton of assists. I, I, I certainly wouldn't take an under on him. I think you got to look at four and a half shots on goal tonight possibly over one and a half points, but uh, I tend to gravitate more towards the shots on goal prop. So, I mean, nine, six, six, seven, six. Um, he's just, he's ripping it and they're getting to goal. So yeah, four and a half shots on goal for McKenna. It's a big number, but I'll certainly take it here. Uh, for a second there, I thought you were going to break out into that song there. What, what's that song with the phone number? Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. <laughs> I thought... <laughs> You're ripping off some numbers there. I wasn't sure which way you were going with it, man. All right. Yeah. With that said, talking about ripping off numbers, let's rip off the six in 60 segment. Uh, and then we'll get to our show best bets and find out what you guys have up. Five and one last week. Uh, can't remember who, who uh, I think it was the Dallas Stars that did us in against Columbus. That might have been the one that did us in. Yeah, I think it was. Um do I have Dallas Stars on this one? I don't. So uh, they can't ruin it for us uh, two weeks in a row. But Dan, fire up that clock. Here we go. All right. 
Columbus and Edmonton, if you like the Oilers, then you've got to take the puck line. The Oilers' last eight wins have all been by two or plus goals. 17 of their last 20 wins, all by two or more goals. Edmonton puck line. Washington and Rangers, uh, the Caps hit rock bottom yesterday with that loss to the Ducks and get a Rangers team on a three-game losing streak of their own, but with a lot more firepower. Uh, let's take the Rangers here, money line. Carolina and Anaheim, Ducks beat the Canes at the Honda Center, but I don't see that happening twice. Canes puck line. On this one, Philly and New Jersey, the Flyers on the second of a back-to-back. -back. If it's Harding goal tonight, it's Urson tomorrow, and he's 6-0 and with a 2.56 goals against average. I'm going to take the under in this game. Vancouver and Boston, Canucks are home now off a good two-game road trip. They're scoring some goals, but so are the Bruins. Let's take the over, 6 or 6.5. And, and Chicago and San Jose, Hawks have won four straight, but they have the worst road record in the West, and the Sharks are retiring Patrick Marlowe's jersey. Let's go with the Sharks money line on Saturday night. That's your 6 and 60. Did I beat the clock, guys? I wasn't even looking. I was looking at my it was notes. pretty good. It was really good. <laughs> it yeah, was close. Was a, was I didn't hear the one. bell. I, I, and, and you would think the guy from Philadelphia with the Liberty Bell would have been ringing that bell with about five or six. There it is. The Liberty Bell goes. <laughs> Sounded just well, like it, your didn't it? Six I don't know if Dan's he's riding ringing down the street in his little bicycle. I like it. I don't know if he's ringing the bell for me or if he's ordering room service or something. I don't know. This guy, it's uh, it's too some, much. But all right, guys, it's time for our, our our show best bet. Uh, um, Brian, I'll go to you first. Uh, you touched on it. Uh, uh, in the third game that we covered, but give us your show best bet. Let us know what you have up at Wager Talk, not only for tonight, but possibly for this weekend. As of right now, I've got two plays up. Um, going to put them in an all inclusive package today for a discounted price since we did lose that big play yesterday. Uh, two plays up in college basketball. I'm still working on it. It's still early in the morning here at a late night out at the hockey game. But uh, yeah, going back to this LA game uh, tonight, playing at the New York Islanders. Um, they had that game in hand yesterday and found a way to lose it in overtime to the Devils. Expect them to play a, a pretty good game here, but this is their third game in four nights. Um, and then they got tomorrow off and then they play uh, the Rangers uh, coming up on Sunday. So uh, a little bit tired, from, but I, I don't expect, I, I after uh, a couple one goal losses, I expect them to come out with a, a, a pretty good effort here. But we talked in the past about any time a Western Conference team is playing an Eastern Conference team, you got to look at the Eastern Conference team because I think that's a better league. Uh, the Islanders are playing very well as of late. Ever since they made that trade, the offense has been much better for this team than it was before that. Uh, you're getting them a base, what was originally uh, similar to a pick em situation here. I, I just looked at the... Uh, at the current lines and somebody hit the Islanders across the board. So now we're seeing upwards of 140 at Caesars and uh, Bookmaker. So they were looking at the same thing I was here. So I like the Islanders. Unfortunately, we're not going to get it at the number that I sent uh, a little bit earlier, but that's the way I'm looking at this. Uh, they're coming off of that win at home against Winnipeg, so they don't travel at all. And uh, they don't have to play again until uh, they play Winnipeg on Saturday on the road. So I'll take the Islanders and what uh, I think has a little bit of value still remaining. All right, um, go Islanders. Uh, I like that as well, too. I was watching the uh, live lines while you were talking about that as well, too, and saw it light up. Uh, Andy, let us know what you got up this weekend and tonight, and uh, give us a show best bet. Sure. Uh, well, we got a 5% UFC play that is up for Saturday. Those have been going really well, 13-4 and four run on uh, MMA plays, and... Uh, nice eight and three run in NHL four and one last night, and uh, we uh, we got we're coming back on NBA tonight a five and zero run before the All Star break, so we're kind of just doing well across all sports plus forty six units uh, for the season. So we've got a special up one hundred ninety nine dollars. You get all plays, all sports, all five percent plays through the end of March. So when we're running well across all sports, we want everyone to have access to that. So. Um, I, I will say also on NHL props, like you have to be consistent with these. You know, if you're playing a guy and he goes, you're playing him over and he goes under one game, don't abandon uh, him if he's on a you know stretch. You're looking for these guys to hit seven out of ten or eight out of ten games. And uh, my best bet is one of these guys that has continued to do it, 
that's JT Comfort. I, I just love getting him at one and a half shots. I love these players at one and a half shots. He's eight and two to the over his last 10 games. Uh, this Winnipeg Jets team is not impressing me. I don't think they're playing that great right now. And actually, he's got a great matchup. They allow the 11th most shots per game to left wings. They allow seven shots a game to his position. Uh, I love this one and a half number. As long as they keep putting out one and a half on Comfort, I'm going to uh, keep playing it. So anytime I can, uh, Backlund's another one for the Capitals. They keep putting him out at one and a half. I believe he had three last night. So Comfort at one and a half, that's my show best bet. And that's actually a client play that's up on wagertalk.com right now. Love to hear it and good luck. Uh, guys, I am going to go with a, a shot prop as well too. This is one I've put out on the show before that is hit. Uh, and I think I put a couple of times. I'm going to go right back to it. I expect to see uh, a lot of up and down on the ice tonight in Florida with the uh, Sabres. Uh, and I'm going to take Aaron Ekblad over three and a half shots uh, on goal. Yes, a defenseman, uh, but it's even money. Uh, five shots on goal against the Sabres last time they met. And he's gone over this number in nine of his last 12 games. It's a high number, but you're going to see it with uh, puck carrying defensemen and, and one who are on the uh, – on the ice more than 20 minutes a game. So Aaron Ekblad over three and a half shots on goal, even money is my show best bet. Uh, before we do the recap, guys, listen, we enjoy you guys tuning in uh, each and every day to Puck Time. We have such a great community. You guys share a lot of info there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, our subscribers are growing by the day and we absolutely love it here. Uh, Andrew should be back on uh, Monday. Um, but um, you know, with that said, we can give him Monday off, and uh, I'm sure uh, one of you two guys will fill in. Let's have a look at the show best bets. I'm on Aaron Ekblad, over three and a half shots, even money. Brian on the New York Islanders, minus 135. And uh, Andy Lang on JT Comfort, over one and a half shots on goal. Guys, have a great and safe weekend, and we will see you on Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Have you checked out all the new handicappers at Wager Talk? If not, here's your chance. You can take 50% off your first daily or three-day all-access purchase at Wager Talk using coupon code TRYWT. Our new roster of experts is 30 deep, covering sports from all around the world, giving you tons of options to choose from. All you have to do to redeem this offer is go to wagertalk.com, choose a handicapper of your choice, and use coupon code TRYWT at checkout, saving 50% on your first purchase.